Star Wars Dark Forces. Now that's a game I have not played in a long time. A long time. I played it a lot as a kid, but once the sequels came out, I never went back. It wasn't until I saw a trailer for the remaster that my interest was rekindled, especially since it promised quality of life improvements. I'm really glad I took the time to revisit Dark Forces. Not only did I get very nostalgic, but I was amazed at how well this 29-year-old game still holds up. When you think about Star Wars, it's usually centered around the Jedi and the Sith, lightsabers and the Force. Dark Forces takes a different approach and instead focuses on regular people during the war with the Galactic Empire. You play as Kyle Katarn, a mercenary hired by the Rebel Alliance. He's responsible for stealing the Death Star plans, which led to the destruction of the Death Star. In retaliation, the Empire created a new brand of soldiers called Dark Troopers. Kyle is once again called upon to uncover the Dark Trooper project and shut it down for good. Your mission takes you across 14 levels with impressive designs. One level has you investigate the aftermath of a base that was attacked. Another takes you to the Groma system that's filled with a red haze, giving it a creepy look. Others are straight out of the movies, such as Imperial Ships, Coruscant, and Nar Shaddaa. Thanks to the updated visuals, they're pretty to look at and succeed in capturing the Star Wars atmosphere. If you're curious, the remaster includes the option to switch between the original and enhanced graphics with a single button, so you can appreciate how much work went into making it look as good as it does. I also appreciate the variety in the objectives, which helps prevent the game from feeling repetitive. For example, you'll navigate a sewer system to capture an Imperial Weapon Specialist. A rebel spy feeding you intel gets captured, and you'll infiltrate a detention center to save him from execution. You'll solve puzzles, locate key cards with combinations to doors, and detonate reactors and facilities. Sometimes you'll engage in boss fights, whether against the Dark Troopers themselves or against a familiar character. The combat for Dark Forces is based on the original Doom game. You collect a range of weapons and gather pickups to replenish your health, shields, and ammo, as well as provide a temporary boost. Weapons have both primary and secondary firing modes, which bring their own combat advantages. You can also set mines and throw thermal detonators, though the velocity of the latter is a bit of a learning curve. They're all satisfying to use thanks to the visual cues and sound feedback. If you're out of ammo, there is a melee attack, which is surprisingly satisfying. You can also pick up tools to help you navigate, such as a headlight and goggles to help you see in the dark. You'll find cleats to help navigate icy areas, and a mask to protect you from toxic fumes. What separates Dark Forces from the original Doom is the ability to vertically aim. Originally you had to use the keyboard to pitch up and down, but with the remaster you can freely aim with the mouse as we're used to having today. It also introduced crouching, jumping, as well as multi-layered levels that can be accessed through platforming, stairs, and elevators, all features that quickly became industry standards. As impressive as Dark Forces is for a 1995 game, it's only fair to point out a few things that have not aged well. The level design can look repetitive as you run back and forth through the same looking rooms and corridors. It's easy to get lost, and with no visual clues, it's sometimes unclear what you're supposed to do to progress. In addition, I occasionally got stuck in the map when platforming, and there's apparently no way to fix this, so the developer added a respawn option in the pause menu. The game presents a nice challenge as you progress, but occasionally there's a random difficulty spike. One example is Jabba's ship. It has way too many mines, as well as thermal detonators being thrown at you. Worse, you can't shoot the mines to get rid of them, only explosives work. If you don't have any, trying to run past them almost always leads to damage. When you finish the game, there's not much reason to go back and replay it, unless you want to revisit your favorite levels. Every achievement is earned after a single playthrough, and there's nothing else to unlock. You can go back and find all the secrets, but they only give you extra pickups. And when finding secrets, there's no notification that one was found. And finally, one glaring issue is the music. 
specifically the general MIDI option. I'm not sure what the original developer was going for here, but it's downright painful and obnoxious. Needless to say, you're going to want to select the OPL3 option. One thing you'll hear me say often on this channel is that certain games are an important part of history. It's because those games introduced features and made advancements that helped move the medium forward, and I'm a big proponent of preserving them. Dark Forces is one of those games. It took the Doom formula and made it better. It was a blueprint that not only led to more great Star Wars games, but more great games in general. I'm happy that Night Dive Studios stayed faithful to the original, even if it brought along its flaws, so we can appreciate this fact and reintroduce it to future generations. Star Wars Dark Forces Remaster is a joy to play. The visuals are sharp, combat is great, and it's just nice having classic Star Wars again. Whether you're into Star Wars or not, this is a game that is worth your time. And maybe this opens the door for the sequels to be remastered? Please? Pretty please? Anyway, if you enjoyed the review, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, and comment below on what you think of Dark Forces. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.